All right, so here's a video of a green tree monitor cage. This is the front. There's the top. And the bottom down here. You can see it's got a vent in the front. There's also another vent in the back up there. So this cage is um, six feet tall, four feet wide, and two feet deep. And I'm just going to open it up here. So I have sliding glass with this uh, door lock that I bought off of Amazon. I also bought these um, this track here for the glass off of Amazon. It's pretty cool. And the glass is one eighth of an inch thick. And it's foggy in here right now because I was spraying some water in there. And this cage really holds the heat and humidity really, really, really good. Like I had installed a fogger, which is up here, but I don't have to use it because the cage just really traps in the heat and humidity very well. I also had um, a few basking areas, uh, but I actually had to stop using so many light bulbs because it was just getting too hot in here for them. So now they have this one, which is, um, it's a power sun, an 80 watt power sun, and it lets off UVB and heat both. So this is Esmeralda and Kiwi, and they're basking. So in here I have this little cup, got the cup holder off of Amazon, and then I just change out these plastic cups and put them in here. Kiwi likes to drink out of them. She also likes to play in the cup and tries to fit inside of there and splash around. But they do have a big water bowl in the bottom. If you can see it back there and actually a couple of them can fit in there because it's so big oh no 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 don't come out stay in there stay in there thank you and yeah they're both really friendly um but i won't be able to do this video if they're climbing all over me <laughs> So I have this huge cork tube here. It runs all the way across. And I drilled a hole right here so I could see, but also so that I could attach these brackets that um, hold it up. So here's one of the brackets. These are like iron brackets. You can see that I put it in here. It's actually through this lattice and this lattice here is plastic. I got it from Home Depot and I bought it because it looked like tree branches kind of. I don't know I think it looks really good in the cage. And then all these fake plants I bought most of them from Michaels when they were having a sale and a couple of them I got from Walmart and put them in here. You can see so this right here is the nest box this is actually a tall kitchen trash can I don't know if you can see it it's a trash can and I put a layer of like cork sheet on the top of it on the lid and also made a hole and put this cork tube in here and inside of it no Esmeralda don't come out Stay in there, okay? No, don't come out. Stay in there. Stay in there. Thank you. And, um, oh yeah, so there's this cork tube that's attached going down inside. And inside of this, um, the thing is completely filled up with damp moss. And what I usually do is whenever I see my tree monitors breeding, I will add about a gallon of water into this. I'll just pour it right through the top. 
and by the time that the females are ready to lay eggs the water has then created a gradient so like it'll be really wet towards the bottom and then towards the top it'll be almost completely dry and that way the female can dig down and pick out the exact you know correct humidity that she wants that's perfect for her and she'll lay her eggs in there and then I'll just take out this whole thing and open the lid and dig the eggs out well Kiwi's gonna drink some water I think either that or she might play in here what are you doing Kiwi and Kiwi is actually um, a baby that I produced from my tree monitors Emerald and Jade about maybe like eight and a half years ago now I think that's how old she is she's so cute such a pretty girl yeah, Esmeralda here is um, wild caught. She was actually given to me um, because she was in really bad shape and the person wanted me to try and save her, rehab her. And he just ended up giving her to me. So that was pretty awesome. So I have this big log coming up too. This is actually a piece of driftwood um, that I got when I was visiting one of my friends in New York. We went to the beach and we found this and he helped me carry it back to the car, which was awesome. And the bottom is organic dirt or soil mix. It has like no fertilizers, no pesticides in there. And, um, oh yeah, so I do have a camera up there. So I can see what they're doing. Um, the only thing with the camera is Kiwi, this girl here, she likes to climb on top of the camera and uh, make it so that it points down. And then for some reason I can't use my phone. I guess the motor gets stuck and I can't make it go back up. So I have to like manually put it up, but it'll go side to side. And I do have a food bowl in here, too. Hold on. So you can see it here. This is a food bowl um, that's actually for parrots. It's stainless steel. And I just attached it to the lattice there. It's got some super worms in there right now. Yeah, so that's what the bottom looks like on this side. You can see here. Yeah, and they love to climb up and down the walls. So it's always important to put something on the walls. But I didn't want to use cork because eventually over time, like after a decade, the cork will start like breaking apart and crumbling and I really wanted this cage to last so that's why I decided to do the uh, the plastic lattice on the walls and it goes all the way around you can see where I screwed them in but then to waterproof it um, I used tinted dry lock and then I sealed all the corners with aquarium sealant. I think there's some lights up there too, you can see. And for the vent, I don't know if you can see it, but behind it is a five inch hole. And then I just attached the vent on top of that and it's the same thing on the bottom too you might be able to see that yeah see there's a five inch hole and then there's that vent right there and the wood for the outside um i actually used this like white whitewash stain this is actually a stain on the wood and I did that so it would match my living room because my living room is like grays and whites. Yeah, so this is 
This is their cage. And they really seem to love it in here. So that basking spot there is around 120 degrees. And then like right here in the log, because I have a temp gun, it stays around like maybe like 85. And then towards the bottom, it gets maybe around like 75, 75 degrees. So it doesn't get cold in here. And I don't heat the nest box. Um, I've never had to. The very first time that my tree monitors ever laid eggs, I had um, heat on the one side and the female laid eggs the furthest away from the heat. So after that, I took off the heat and she's always laid eggs in it, perfectly fine. The most important thing to her was actually the moisture of the moss inside of the nest box. If it was too moist, she wouldn't like it. And if it was too dry, she wouldn't like it. And that's why I try to add water right as soon as I see them breeding because then I have about like 30 days until she's going to go in there and lay the eggs. And in that 30 day time, that's when you get your moisture gradient uh, going up and down inside of that box. Yeah, and that box, it's like, I think maybe like three feet tall. Three feet tall, I would say. I tried a, um, a shorter box, one that wasn't as deep, and the females didn't like it. So that's why I switched to the trash can, and I've been using it ever since. And never had any issues then after that. They're so cute. Yeah, and the male, I think, is actually in the nest box right now. He's, I guess, asleep. But the girls are awake. They're so cute. Let me go to the other side. All right, so that's my cage. I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, uh, just write them in the comments.